let's look at how Newton's law can be applied to a system of particles. Now that we know how to find the center of mass of a system of particles. Here's our equation. Location of the center of mass is equal to 1 over the total mass times the sum of n terms where each term represents a particle of the system and m times r is the mass of each particle times its location in the x, the y, and the z. So let's cross multiply the 1 over m to the other side. So I have m times r on the left side. And let's expand this sigma notation to show all the terms. Then let's take the derivative with respect to time. We know that the derivative of position with respect to time is velocity. So all these terms, the position vector turns uh, becomes a velocity vector. And if we take the derivative again, all the velocity vectors become acceleration vectors. And if I look at each particle individually, uh, mass times acceleration, we know by Newton's second law is force. So uh, the mass of the first particle times its acceleration is equal to the force acting on particle number one, and so on for all the other particles. Now it is very possible that a force acting on a particle could be an internal force. That's fine. If that is the case, though, we know that forces come in pairs due to Newton's third law. And so if one particle is experiencing an internal force in one direction, we know another particle is experiencing that same force in the opposite direction. So they will cancel out in the sum of all the forces. And what we'll be left with is only the forces that do not have pairs within the system. In other words, we'll be left with only external forces acting on the system. So what that tells us is the net external force acting on a system of particles is equal to the mass of that system of particles times the acceleration of the center of mass of the system. Now it is true that there could be nothing there at that location where that center of mass is located, but that spot, that location that describes the center of mass, it will be accelerating. According to Newton's second law, F equals MA. Let's look at an example. Let's have a system of particles that consists of three particles, a four kilogram particle, an eight kilogram particle, and another four kilogram particle. These particles are experiencing external forces given uh, in the direction as shown by the vectors, the blue vectors, and uh, F1 is going to be 6 newtons, F2 is going to be 12 newtons, and F3 is going to be 14 newtons. In the diagram, this angle right here between our uh, horizontal and F2, that is going to be 45 degrees. Okay, so let's use our equation that the net force is equal to the total mass times the acceleration of the center of mass to figure out where our center of mass is and how it is moving. How is it accelerating in what direction? So the sum of our forces, I'm going to cross multiply the mass to the other side. So I'll get my net external force divided by mass of the system will equal my uh, acceleration of the center of mass. So I work separately in the x and the y. So in the x direction, the acceleration of the center of mass is the sum of the forces in the x direction divided by the total mass. So uh, given this information up here and the fact that this is 45 degrees, uh, the force on one, particle one, is 6 newtons in the negative direction. On uh, particle two is uh, 12 cosine 45 degrees in the positive direction for the x component of F2. And F3 is 14 newtons. So I add all that up and divide by 16, and I see that my center of mass in the x direction is accelerating at 1.03 meters per second squared. Likewise, in the y direction, F2 is the only force that has a y component. There it is, 12 sine 45. Divide that by 16 to get my acceleration in the y direction of positive 0.530 meters per second squared. 
So here is my center of mass location. Notice there is actually no mass located there, but that is the location of the center of mass, and that position in space is accelerating with an x component of 1.03 meters per second squared, a y component of 0.53 meters per second squared. So using Pythagorean theorem, an overall acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared in a direction of inverse tangent of the y component over the x component which gives me 27 degrees, as shown in this diagram. Here's an interesting case. Suppose that at a fireworks display, a rocket is launched on a parabolic path. At a certain point, it explodes into fragments. If the explosion had not occurred, the rocket would have continued along the trajectory shown by the dotted line. The forces of the explosion are internal to the system. That is, they are forces on parts of the system from other parts of the system. If we ignore air drag, the net external force acting on the system is the gravitational force, regardless of whether the rocket explodes or not. Thus, the acceleration, ACOM, of the center of mass of the fragments while they are in flight remains equal to G. This means that the center of mass of the fragments follows the same parabolic trajectory that the rocket would have followed had it not exploded. Keep in mind this is only while all the pieces are in the air. Once some of the pieces touch the ground, then that changes. Of course, we are neglecting air resistance. So along these dotted lines that I've drawn here, that's the center of mass of each firework. That position in space will continue to move in the parabolic trajectory that it was originally moving in before the firework exploded. And if the center of mass was not moving to begin with, then it will remain at rest in the absence of external forces. So here, let's look at a problem that we did back in chapter five. Uh, a 40 kilogram girl and an 8.4 kilogram sled are on the frictionless ice of a frozen lake, 15 meters apart, but connected by a rope of negligible mass. The girl exerts a horizontal 5.2 Newton force on the rope. How far from the girl's initial position do they meet? So the girl pulling on the rope and the rope pulling on the sled, those are all internal forces to the girl rope sled system. And there are no uh, external forces of friction because we say it is a frictionless uh, surface. So in the absence of any external forces, they're going to meet at the center of mass because their center of mass will remain in the same place the entire time since there are no external forces to move it. So our equation for calculating the center of mass from the girl's position is the mass of the sled over the total mass times the distance between them, and we come up with 2.6 meters which is the same answer we got back in chapter five using equations and motion methods. Now we can use our equation for center of mass to find out that they meet here at a distance 2.6 meters from her initial starting place.